my channel's taught you anything, it's that one of the best ways to become a really good cook is to take from scratch to a whole nother level. Now, today we're gonna make a burger, but not just any burger. We're gonna make it from scratch. And when you think of a burger, you don't often think of making it from scratch, but just you wait. I'll show you right now that it's really not that hard to make a good burger from scratch. You need some nice, fresh, hot, and steamy buns, a good sauce, you know, one of those classic special sauces that are really only just a few common ingredients mixed together. Perhaps a few homemade pickles, some good old cheese, my go-to is always cheddar, and well, some good fresh ground beef. Yes, I wish I could fly to Japan and grow a cow all the way up to be this beautiful Wagyu cattle, but I looked into it and it's just so unrealistic and expensive. So we'll have to settle with this. By now, I hope you know that I like shopping for my meat from the Wagyu shop. And no, this isn't just some ad. Like I've said in the past, I'm never gonna tell you to get stuff from places that I don't already get myself. You can count on that. And no, I wasn't paid to tell you this. I have tried meat from every single place and I'm telling you right now that as a chef, this is the single best place to get Wagyu. What I'm holding right here is a real treat. This is Japanese Wagyu beef. More specifically, Miyazaki Gyu strip loin. This beef has literally won the Wagyu Olympics numerous times. And I'm gonna grind this into ground beef to make the most amazing burger you've ever seen. Now, let's get started. To a medium bowl, we'll start by adding one cup plus two tablespoons of warm water. We'll immediately follow this with two tablespoons of active dry yeast. Right away, whenever I'm working with yeast, I like to mini whisk it up. We don't need the big whisk, guys. The little whisk will do the trick. Just move this around a little bit to get it nice and spread out. All right, fine, the mini whisk really isn't working. I'm gonna make an exception just this one time. Once that's all mixed, we'll add a third cup of vegetable oil, followed by a quarter cup of sugar. Again, we'll whisk this up and then let it stand for just five minutes. Now into our mixing bowl, we'll add our yeast mixture. Then we'll follow this with one whole room temperature egg. Make sure you do the one-handed crack, along with three whole cups of all-purpose flour, keeping in mind that you may have to add just a little bit more to get that perfect bun. You can also add just a little pinch of salt. Now we'll close this and knead for about three to five minutes until smooth and elastic. Your dough should eventually look like this. Start by flouring your work surface. I like to coat my hands a little bit as well. Drop your dough onto the board and just appreciate how soft and smooth it is. Using a bench scraper, break this into six equal pieces. Personally, I like my buns nice and thick, but everybody has their own preferences. Once you've broken them into six even balls, scrape the flour off your cutting board. To put this into a perfect ball, we're gonna hold it in the palm of our hand and pinch from the outside. Keep going around in a circle and pinching right into the middle until the pieces that you're pinching begin to feel a little bit sticky. At this point, it's gonna look somewhat like a soup dumpling. And you're then gonna put it face down and begin rolling around on your board. That stickiness combined with the lack of flour is gonna help make it stick and shape the perfect ball. When your bun looks something like this, it's ready to bake. But first, just do this with the remaining five balls. Pinching in, going around in a circle, and then using that sticky part that you've created to grip to the board while you roll it around in a circle, right between your thumb and your pinky. And again, there you have it, the perfect bun. Once we've cut up our Wagyu into these beautiful cubes, some of which will naturally contain this fat cap on the top, which is great for that marbling of our ground meat. We'll feed them through our meat grinder, alternating between fat and beef. This right here is sure to make the best burger meat you've ever had. But keep in mind that you can do this with pretty much any cut of steak, as long as you alternate with fat. And you're bound to get a better blend for your burgers. Once we've ground up our meat, we'll place this in the fridge, such that we'll be able to form them into patties a bit easier when the time comes to cook them. By now, our buns should have been resting for about 10 minutes. And I will say, they look delicious. But first, we'll crack an egg into a bowl, mini whisk it up, and paint an egg wash over all of our buns. This will give us that really golden brown color that we're looking for. And by the way, you might notice here that I've made some buns that are larger than others, which as long as they cook in a similar time is okay for me, because it's really hard to cut out all your dough balls in the exact same size. Now, once these are all nice and egg washed, this will go in the oven at 425 for about 10 minutes or until golden brown. While our buns bake, let's make our pickles. It's a very simple process. Start with one cup of white vinegar, followed by one cup of water. Then just a little pinch of salt and just a teaspoon of sugar. That's it. Heat this liquid up until the sugar dissolves. Now using a mandolin, we'll slice our cucumber into a mason jar. For whatever reason, mason jars are often used for pickling. It's probably just because they're these big glass jars that are easy to toss in the fridge and can be used over and over again. But if you wanna keep it easy, you can even pickle right in the pot that we made the vinegar mixture in. Now, after you've let it cool down just a little bit, pour your vinegar mixture over the cucumbers. And that's it. 
In about 10 minutes, you'll have pickles, and that's why we call this the quick pickle method. I'll promise you right now, this will be the quickest pickle you've ever gotten. Now, quickly, I'll put just a bit more egg wash on top of my buns, because to me, a good burger bun is not complete without sesame seeds. But if you put them on at the start of your cooking process, they'll burn. When there's only a minute or two left, sprinkle on my sesame seeds. Now, back in the oven, these go. Now, for our special sauce, we'll start with about a half cup of mayonnaise. I always use this Japanese mayonnaise. To me, it's got the best flavor out there, and I go through about a bottle a week. Then I'll go about three tablespoons of ketchup, maybe just a little bit more for good measure, about a quarter cup of our chopped up pickles, which in addition to flavor, add some really nice texture, just a little bit of hot sauce, depending on how spicy you want it, a little bit of salt, and just a little bit of pepper. Now stir this up, and then tell me this doesn't look like your favorite burger joint special sauce. I could sit here and watch this for days. Just look at that sauce fall. Maybe even a little slow motion action. And now, our buns are complete. Now, look guys, I'm telling you right now, you might find a million recipes out there, but these are the best burger buns you're ever gonna get. We didn't have to wait 65 hours to let these rise either. Yet, this looks like it's risen pretty well to me. Not throwing shade at anybody, just saying there's sometimes better ways to do it. Little shortcuts that make cooking a heck of a lot easier. Also, if you're new to this channel, I speak fluent hand, whatever that means. It's time we cook some burger meat. So I'll start with a ring mold that's about the same size as my buns. I wanna keep this really consistent. This on the outside is a car carbon steel skillet. No, it's not dirty. It builds up a sort of layer just like a cast iron. I'll start with my meat, which I will say looks dashing. And because it has so much fat, I'm gonna put it right into the pan without putting fat down first. I'll press this down almost to make a smash patty, and then I'll let it cook and get nice and crispy on this first side. Once this has gotten nice and crispy, I'll take off my ring mold and try to give this a nice flip. Just take a look at that crust. Once I fit it back into my ring mold, I'll cover it with some cheddar cheese, sprinkle a little water, then toss on a lid. It should be nice and melty. And there's one of your patties. Now there's really only one more thing we need to do before we actually assemble our burger. And aside from cutting the buns in half, that's toasting the buns. Cause you should never have a burger without toasted buns. I'll use a nonstick pan with a good amount of oil. I like to make sure I have enough oil to cover all those crevices up inside the bun I'm toasting. Otherwise you're gonna get a really spotty bun. Now once that gets nice and warm, place down your buns. Sometimes it's good to just hold them down a little bit as well. Now, if your bun comes out something like this, you're doing something right. Look how much that oil is still crackling. Same thing with the top of our bun here. We missed a little in the middle, but that's all right. This is nice and well toasted. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the plating. We'll start with just a little bit of our special sauce. I can single-handedly tell you that this is the best special sauce I've ever had, and I'll definitely place the recipe in the caption. After this, let's slide on our first patty. Look at the caramelization around the edges of that Wagyu patty. Now we'll add our first piece of lettuce. It's gotta be at least a little bit healthy. After the lettuce, I wanna put a middle bun piece, sort of like they do at McDonald's. This is such an epic burger that it just deserves this piece. On top of the middle bun piece, more special sauce, because why the heck not? I'll follow this with another piece of lettuce, a nice slab of tomato, our second patty, and then straight from the jar, a generous serving of our homemade pickles. We'll finish it off with that toasted bun. And last but not least, we're gonna brand it, because after all, this is my burger. And here we are. We've branded our burger. We sort of set out today to make the best burger ever. And did we succeed? I don't know. I'll be honest, there's a lot of burgers made every single day, but I will give us this. I think we got pretty damn close. I mean, we even branded the top of the damn thing. We went all out with this burger. This thing truly has the best special sauce I've ever tasted in a burger. It's like a quadruple decker or a quintuple decker, whatever. It's as homemade as you can possibly get. And honestly, it looks mind-blowingly good. Now, I say we just stop looking at this thing and take a bite. Holy Santa Claus, that's good. All right, I'm a little bit without words for this burger. Give me a couple bites, one second. All right, these buns, top notch. There's only one thing in this entire burger that I forgot. And no, it's not bacon. I love bacon, I just didn't have any bacon. I forgot to salt my tomato, and I meant to. And I'm sorry, and I hope you'll forgive me. But let me try to just describe this burger to you. The homemade buns are fluffy and pillowy. I could literally sleep on these homemade buns. The Wagyu beef, Indescribable. It's got those many different textures inside it too. That fat is so incredibly developed in flavor. You got that really nice crispy edge on the outside, and then you got that really soft, fatty, gooey cheesiness on the top of it. That sauce is just insane. That special sauce really is special. Then you got that lettuce that, to be honest, doesn't really add all that much. It's more there for looks. This is an A plus burger right here. And let me give you a trick. If you want to do this at home, go buy a nice steak. It doesn't have to be Wagyu. In fact, it's probably better if it's not Wagyu. Take that steak and either chop it up a ton and until it's super nice and minced, or throw it in your food processor and literally blend it. You should be able to blend it right into ground beef. Then follow the rest of the process that I did, which as you saw, isn't all that difficult, and
and you'll have yourself a knockout burger. Now, please don't forget to subscribe and know that I love you. Thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for loving these videos. Don't forget to drop it a like and a comment for what you want next time. And also, I'm doing a big 1 million giveaway, which seems like it might come up pretty soon. So give me some ideas for that. I'll look through all of them. I'll see you on the flippy flip.